Settling is not an option for Everything me. I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? <laughs> because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario. And today we're talking about manifesting and getting what you want, which is obviously a reoccurring theme on this show. But I feel like I constantly get like more and more questions and comments in regards to this. And there's always just so much more I can say. And I also feel like this topic is perfect on the heels of my Aruba trip that I just came back from. I know I haven't mentioned that I was going to Aruba. I feel like I haven't done like a little personal intro in a while. So I'm going to do one today. My boyfriend and I just went to Aruba. This was like technically our one year anniversary, which we actually didn't even realize when we were originally planning to go away at this time. We were just planning a trip in general. And then we were like, oh my god, wait, it's also going to be our one year together. So let's like make our vacation for that. <laughs> now, I love Aruba. This is the third time that I've been. I always have such an amazing vacation. But we did have a little hiccup on the vacay, which did not affect much. But it did make us cancel two different things. It made us cancel a sushi reservation that I was really looking forward to. It's a restaurant called Azia. It's owned by the restaurant called Gianni's, which I feel like everybody who knows Aruba knows Gianni's, the like best, most popular Italian restaurant. Delicious, we went. But yeah, they opened Azia, I think recently. I think it's relatively new. And so I did not get a chance to go yet. And I plan on going on this trip, but I canceled that. I'll explain why. Canceled that. And I also can't, we had to cancel the UTVs. So some people know them more as like ATVs. UTVs, ATVs, whatever you want to call the like dune buggy bike situation things. Um, we canceled both of those. Those were for our last day. But the day before our last day, like our second to last night, we went to dinner. And actually, I'm going to talk about this dinner specifically in this episode because this was like a dream date that I manifested without even really realizing I kind of like put it all together afterwards. But this was a dream date I really always dreamed of, which was like a beachfront, like like a waterfront um, dinner date. So like sitting on the beach, a really romantic vibe, sitting right along the ocean. So we did this on our second to last night and I got lobster and I have definitely now discovered that I have a severe lobster allergy that developed later on in life for me, which is so bizarre because if you know me, then you know I'm a seafood fish sushi eater like I don't eat meat and this is not a new thing I'm not like a new pescatarian I never did I stopped eating meat in like the sixth grade so chicken steak all of the above at a very young age and I've just always been more into seafood shellfish all of the above and so in the past year I have gotten violently ill like severely severely sick from eating lobster now this now that this was like the third time I'm like okay this is this is it but you know the first time it happened I we went to a Portuguese restaurant and it's called Valenca I will say the name because clearly there's nothing wrong with the food at Valenca clearly the food doesn't make you sick it, it must be me I got lobster there and then the next day I got severely sick so this is the first time that I ever had a reaction from lobster so it didn't hit me right away it was like a slow burn like I was fine that night I was even fine the next day and then it hit me like that night the next day so almost like a full 24 hours later and you girls will find this funny not funny for me but this is when my boyfriend and I just kind of started dating it was last summer and on Sunday you if you girls follow me then you know like we have Sunday dinner in my family every Sunday it's like a big deal and so this that Sunday was the first time he ever came to my grandma's for Sunday dinner and you know we're having dinner and I'm perfectly fine and then we're having dessert and everyone who knows me also knows that I love tiramisu so my grandma's like oh I got tiramisu I got it for you and I was like eh, my stomach feels a little like wacky like I feel a little like rumbly I don't think I want to have dessert 
And she's like, you better have it. You know, you know, those Italian grandmothers. I got it for you. I made it for you. You didn't eat enough. You better have some. And I'm like, oh, but my stomach, like I just feel a little bit off. And so whatever, I took one bite. I might have still had the tiramisu in my mouth. And I'm like, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, it's going to come right back out. I ran upstairs and I got violently ill for hours, hours and hours. I never made it back downstairs. I had to like sleep up in the bathroom at my grandmother's house. Like this wasn't just like, oh, I had to get something out of my system. This was like, you know, because that would be like a one and done situation. I was sick all night like four hours I had a nurse come someone who works at the hospital that we know she came with IV bags and I legit did not feel better until I had IV in my system like I thought I was gonna die before that so that was the first time that happened and I didn't really like think it's an allergy I just was like maybe the lobster was bad at Valenka you know like maybe that's just it is what it is and I had bad lobster fast forward then to when I went to Italy for Christmas in December, we went to dinner and I got lobster and pasta. And that night, the same thing happened. Hours later, I was able to go to sleep. So say I went, you know, we got home from dinner, say 11 o'clock and I went to bed and then I got woken up at 2 a.m. to like throw up. And I was up till six o'clock in the morning, super sick. It ruined my whole next day. I was absolutely exhausted. And then that's just what happened again in Aruba. So now we're fast forwarding, you know, from December to April. And, you know, even after the second time, I wasn't like, oh, I'm allergic to lobster. You know, like I eat all different shellfish. I eat shrimp on a regular basis. I eat crab all the time. I eat oysters. Like I always eat shellfish. So nothing would make me think I specifically have a lobster allergy. And at that time in December, I didn't even put that together with the time from the summer that it happened like they didn't really you know go together I just thought these were two completely isolated experiences but now that this happened again in Aruba we were at Atari the restaurant on the beach had such a like romantic lovely dinner but this one like kind of started sooner I didn't get sick faster but I felt it faster like right after we ate dinner we were gonna go like get gelato we were gonna go to the casino and I was just like Ooh, I don't feel good. Like my stomach was hurting. I couldn't have gelato. I just felt really unsettled and I felt like I wasn't digesting my food. I was like, hmm, let me tread lightly because you know when you could like feel the food like in your chest, like you feel like one pump in your stomach and it would all come right out. That's how I felt. So I was like, let me just really tread lightly right now. But I did actually, I was able to fall asleep. I was super uncomfortable, but I did fall asleep. And then same thing. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I was so fucking sick, like never ending. It's like throwing up for hours and hours and hours to the point where there's nothing left. And you're just like, what am I even throwing up at this point? Like it's, it's just nothing. (laughs) So it's like the worst feeling in the world. Anyone who's ever been sick like that, you know how it feels. It's like, please just be done. Like I'm literally just throwing up my insides at this point. Like I have nothing left, please. I'm like praying to God, please let let this end, please. I hate this, I'm scared. And so long story short, even though I did not make a long story short, I love a long story long. I love details. Yeah, I've just now been able to really realize that I must have a severe allergy to lobster. And I did post about it on my Instagram and I got like 50 DMs saying like, this happened to me or this happened to my husband or this happened to my mom. And it's not just like a shellfish allergy. It's like specific types. Some said the same thing is happening to them with lobster. Some said oysters, some said shrimp, some said crab. So it's like isolated shellfish gives them that really violent reaction and so I'm just really sad and part of me is like toying with the idea of potentially eating steak which is crazy because like I said I have been basically vegetarian pescatarian if you want to call it my whole life just about never ate meat but I like got a craving for it, which is weird to like, I don't know, that's never happened to me, but I got a craving for it 
when we canceled that sushi restaurant because Azia was the next day. So after I got sick like that, there was not a chance that I was going to eat sushi the next day. <laughs> so we canceled that and we made a steakhouse reservation. And I was like, I really want something like hearty. Like I want mashed potatoes. So I had a side of mashed potatoes and I had a few pieces of my boyfriend's steak. And it honestly like made me feel a little bit better. Like I definitely was sick for, you know, I just, I just came off of a really like bad sickness. So I di didn't feel great, but my stomach felt settled. And I don't know, like whatever the case was, like I just got this craving for something like meaty and hearty. And so that steak and mashed potatoes was like the cure, I feel like. It's definitely, I feel like I'm like flirting with, you know, something bad, like the bad boy. I'm like, ooh, steak, what are you doing to me? So I think, I mean, my man will be really happy because he hates that I don't eat meat. We can never like go out for like a steak dinner and share it. I think I might give that a shot. Anyway, I know that was a long story time, but I wanted to share all of that because... I did not realize how many people could relate until I posted on Instagram and got so many messages. So just if anybody is going through a similar experience, anybody has answers, anybody has solutions, anything that they would just share and say like, oh my God, this is what I did. I did have one girl say like, I bring Benadryl out with me now because you never know when it's gonna happen. And she's like, that's the only thing because you know, my stomach was hurting, I was feeling nauseous, so I'm taking like Pepto, I'm taking whatever, like all different things, gas X, I, I don't know, and it was all coming right back out. <laughs> I couldn't hold it down. If it is, you know, an allergic reaction, then the only thing is that's gonna help is Benadryl. So I will be carrying Benadryl with me moving forward. And that's really the only solution that I have in addition to just no longer eating lobster. So I can't eat lobster anymore, but just in the event that something happens, I will have Benadryl on me. But in any case, like I said, the restaurant that I got sick at was my like dream date vibe that I always wanted to do. And this dates back to August of 2021. So I posted a reel when I was in Italy. I was in Positano and I took a video. I posted this reel on my Instagram of a couple that was having a waterfront date. So they were at like, I don't know if it was a hotel or just a restaurant at a hotel, whatever it was, but wherever it was that they were sitting, they were like up and right over the water and it was just them. There was like no one else around, the ocean, the mountains, like everything was just like so beautiful. And so I put when I like posted that reel, I put the song on it, just the two of us. That was exactly how the vibe was. Like it was literally just these two people. I didn't see a waiter. I didn't see anybody else around, no other tables. It was just these two people. So I made that the song. And then this is what I wrote in the caption. Dinner date goals. Crystal Irem taught me to create my manifesto and put together scenes of what I imagine my relationship to be like and feel like. All of the moments, both big and small. This was one of those moments where I immediately pictured myself and felt myself being in this scene right here with my person. Just the two of us. You girls have probably heard me talk about Crystal a bunch on this show. She was that love and manifestation coach that I worked with back in January of 2021. I bring her up a lot because I learned a lot from that. Um, but yeah, so that's who I'm referring to. And then I'm going to explain the manifesto part and the scripting part and like the feeling everything after but i'm going to share another example first so now fast forward february 2023 this is one week after i met my boyfriend actually because i had a work trip in mexico so i went out with him february 1st we went out again february 8th and then i left literally like the 9th like the next day and went to mexico and I was hanging out by the pools, like near the beach. It was right there. And it was later, it was like sunset time. And they were setting up dinner tables. So there was like a bunch of small little romantic two person tables, you know, along the beach, along the water. And I took a picture of it and I put it on my story. And I wrote on the story and I said, I'm always manifesting the things I can't wait to do with my husband, a waterfront date night. So that was the second time that I posted about this specific sort of date and I feel like in February 2023 when I made that post 
it didn't even register that I also had that August 2021 reel saying the same thing. I think that these were just two completely separate experiences that I saw and I felt like I could see myself doing this. I could feel myself doing this and being in this moment with my person. And I just posted them both saying relatively the same thing. Now, fast forward, like I said, we just went away for one year together in Aruba and we had dinner exactly like that, right along the ocean, super romantic. They had someone playing live music too. And here's the kicker. As soon as we sat down, that guy that was playing the live music was playing just the two of us. Mike motherfucking drop. That was the song, like I said, that I played in the August reel. And um, I wrote that in the caption too. I said like, this is one of those moments where I immediately pictured myself and felt myself being in the scene right here with my person, just the two of us. And, you know, he's playing like the bongos or whatever. It's like live music. And um, I started to hear the beat of just the two of us. And I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) So I took a video right away. I was recording him playing the whole song. I was like, oh my God, this is the song that I always envisioned playing in this moment. This is the song that made me feel this moment. This is the song that I really like resonated with, with this like really romantic waterfront vibe. Like I could not believe that he played that song as soon as we sat down practically. It was just like, I got like full body chills. I kind of am getting the chills again, telling, you know, this because it just, it feels so surreal when you actually see like your manifestations come to life, when you're actually able to like, put the pieces together. It's almost like having an incomplete puzzle. Have you ever had those like big ginormous puzzles or like you see that somebody has those like, you know, 2000 piece puzzles and they have it like sitting there out and they're like, oh, I haven't finished it yet. That's how it feels when your manifestations become your reality and you're able to like paint the whole picture together. I'm not a big Swifty, but I know a lot of her songs that I know that that one song that was trending like Invisible String and I almost feel like that's this like all of these scenes had this invisible string tying them all together that Positano moment that Mexico moment and now that Aruba moment they were all like one piece like together just waiting to be like you know, figured out, just waiting to be tied together. And it was just honestly this perfect scene, exactly the way that I envisioned it years ago. Our waiter even took the cutest video of us too. And it was so unexpected. Like it was a full production. And it's funny because as soon as we got there, our hostess took a picture for us. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Like, I know like I'm like a content girl, but I feel like when I'm on vacation with my man, I'm a lot more like in the moment and I just like want to take a quick picture and then I'm done. And so we took that one and then our waiter came over and asked us if we wanted a picture. So I was like, no, it's okay. Our hostess already took one. And he was like, ah, are you sure you don't want another one? I'm like, no, it's okay. Like we got a picture. He's like, well, I could probably do better. So if somebody in, in Aruba asks you if you want a picture taken you should just say yes so I'm like okay why not this man does a whole photo shoot like all different angles all different pictures and videography he made this super cute video of us like kissing and cheersing and like showing all the aesthetic like the water there was like the flame things he's showing that like it was just so perfect I mean obviously until it wasn't perfect because I did die after that but point is it was all worth it okay now I want to go back to the whole scripting and manifesto thing and really get into the details of that and funny enough Heidi actually mentioned making her manifesto in last week's episode so if you haven't listened make sure to listen to that it's the episode titled finding your voice and building confidence at any age with Heidi D'Amelio And she was saying how her coach had her like spend time writing her manifesto and she spent four days at the computer writing out her full manifesto and just really like thinking and getting deep and writing out who she is, who she wants to be, what her brand is, what she wants for her life and so on and so forth. And she really didn't like fully find herself or know herself until afterwards. And Heidi's in her 50s, okay? She's 52. So you would think like, 
oh, I'll have it all figured out by then. Like I'll, I'll have everything I want and I'll know myself fully in and out. And that's not always the case. You might continue to go through the motions of life, but not really like put yourself fully first and fully understand who you are and what you want for yourself. And like I said, so on and so forth. And yeah, so listen to that episode because she talked about that. And really until she finally let that all out, she didn't totally know who she fully is. Now the manifesto that I mentioned in the, the earlier part of this episode, the one that I wrote years ago that I did with Crystal, is actually emphasis on the man part. It's your manifesto, like man, M-A-N, a partner, a husband, a boyfriend, a man, okay? So it's the same concept of what Heidi was saying, but this is more specifically in regards to your future relationship, your future partner. So it's all the stuff that Heidi was talking about, um, but rather than being like, for me and who I was, because I did know who I was, it was more for what you want in a man, getting super, super specific. And it goes beyond just making lists of like what you want in a guy. That is part of it. But the main goal with writing a manifesto is to be able to really feel the feelings. So you dive more into things like scripting. Now, I love scripting. I do this with my coaching clients, not just in regards to love, but whatever it is that they want to call in, whatever their dream life looks like in all different ways, career, even being single, just like what you see for your life. So scripting is like making a visualization of your dream life and making a script about it, like a movie script, okay? So you're describing your ideal reality in specific details, exactly how you want it to be, exactly how you want it to look like, exactly what you want it to feel like, and you're acting like as if every single thing that you write on paper will play out because it's a script to a play, to a movie. So you're acting like every single thing that you write on paper will manifest exactly as you write it. So when you're writing your manifesto, imagine that you are a director, a screenwriter, a producer, you're the casting director, you're everything, okay? And you're creating a script and a plot to a movie and you're setting the scenes. And not only are you the director and the producer, like I said, and all of the things behind the scenes, but you're also on the scene. You're the main character. The movie is your life. So everybody else in your life are like the co-stars and the side characters. They're the extras, you know? So you could visualize anything that you want and make a scene out of that specific thing. So to give you some examples, it's like, you know, say that you want to stick to romance if we're going to stay on that topic. An example could be your morning routine with your partner. An example could be how you and your partner spend a day on vacation, where you go, all that stuff. It could be your date night on the weekend or a date night in or dinner at home. Or it could be if you're like the fitness couple, you know, working out together, going to the gym together. If you're into gifts, you know, if that's a love language, you could write a scene of like exchanging Christmas gifts or how you spend the day for each other's birthdays, whatever it might be. It could be literally any scene that you want to envision. So let's say that the scene you're going to be scripting is your morning routine. I always love this one because I think it's something like, yes, there's Christmas and birthdays and all of these things, but those things might not happen on a daily basis. Whereas your morning routine with your partner is something that you're going to experience every single day. So if you were to be scripting about that, I would literally write it down like what side of the bed that you guys sleep on what the bedroom looks like do you each have your own nightstand what's in those nightstands what do you keep on top of those nightstands what time do you guys wake up is one a morning person and the other isn't like is this like an opposite detract or you know are you do you want to both be on the same page where you're both early birds or Do you want to have breakfast in bed? Do you want to be the one to make the breakfast and bring it to your partner in bed? Or do you want to be the one who gets treated? Or do you not want to have breakfast in bed at all? Do you want to get up and get ready together at the same time in the same bathroom? What would the bathroom look like? Do you share a sink? Do you have separate sinks? Do you have separate bathrooms altogether? Do you have, 
your own closets? Do you share a closet? Do you have a walk-in closet? What would that routine look like? Are you doing a whole skincare routine and he's getting in the shower? Whatever it might be, I want to know what the the paint on the walls look like. Is there wallpaper? Is Are the rooms white and bright and airy? Or are they dark and moody and sensual? Like, what what is the movie scene going to look like? Because think about it. When you can't leave any detail out because if you were to be writing a movie, producing a movie, they have to stage the whole scene. There has to be all of the props. So everything has to count. So are you woken up to an alarm clock? Are you woken up to the sun coming in the room? How do you speak to each other in the morning? Are you having sex in the morning? Are you cuddling in the morning? Or are you more like groggy? You don't want to be touched in the morning. What is that dynamic like? Are you saying, good morning, baby? Or, hi, uh, you know, have a good day. Like, what, you know, what is going to happen in this scene, okay? It has to literally be, like I said, that specific down to the paint color on the walls. And it's super important that you get this specific because it's kind of like what I just said it about feeling it. Like, it's not just about visualizing the scene, you need to you need to be able to feel the feelings too. Now, when you can picture something like generally you could see it, right? You're like I could see myself getting married. Like imagine, you know, your wedding day. You're like, yeah, I could see myself getting married. You might not picture where it is, what you're wearing, who's there, what your guests are wearing. You might not be picturing all of those things, right? But you're like, yeah, I could see myself getting married. But when you work on scripting and you could picture something that specific in all of those details, you won't just see it, you will feel it. You can feel that moment. And that's what gets you so much more closer to making these things happen because they feel real and it starts to become one with you. So one thing that we used to do when I was in this like um, coaching program to get closer and closer to really being able to feel it because trust me it's not always easy you can't just say like oh I wrote everything down I feel 10 out of 10 great like I'm 100% sure all this is gonna happen that's not always the case so what we would do to like help ourselves get closer and closer was when we would like really talk about our manifesto or think about it and you know sit with it and resonate with it we would close our eyes and rate the feeling so like whether crystal would ask us questions or we would just describe you know whatever it is that we are manifesting we would have our eyes closed and then on a scale of like one to five or one to ten whatever it was you would say Here's where I'm feeling right now. 10 would be like, I'm 100% there. Like, I know this is happening. I can completely feel what it's like to be in love, to be in this moment. I can completely envision this exact morning routine with my partner going just like this. And then a one being like, I just can't see it happening for me. Like, I have to completely start from scratch. I have no confidence or self-esteem around this. I really need to build it up. And like, you know, and so you would gauge it like that. For me, I feel like I was typically on average like a five or a six. Maybe sometimes I would be a seven on the scale. But because for a while, it was hard for me to believe that it was possible for me. Especially when you're single for so long. So you girls will be able to understand if that's you, you know, if you're in that place. And for me, um... I could tell you exactly why it was hard for me to envision it. And this is what's important too. Being able to call out and know why you can't fully picture it. If you're going to do this and you're going to write out the manifesto and then you're going to close your eyes and you're going to try to feel it and you're going to rate your feelings from a scale of 1 to 10, you have to be able to know why you're landing where you're landing. If you're like, I'm a 3 on the scale, you have to be able to know. You can't just be like, I just don't feel it. There has to be a reason. You have to be able to know what's the trauma that's there. What's blocking you? What's in your way? What's holding you back? What's giving you these limiting beliefs? You have to be able to pinpoint it. For me, I could tell you for a fact that why I could not surpass a seven on that scale for the most part was because I wasn't making the space for what I wanted. So I could picture what I wanted. I could see it, but I wasn't calling it in so I couldn't feel it so at that time when I was in this program 
I was just taking what I could get. Like, if a guy asked me out, like, I would go, even if I, like, wasn't 100% into it. I valued attention from guys. So even guys that I knew weren't good for me, guys that I knew didn't have the best intentions with me, if they would text me or call me, I would answer. I would respond. You know, I would entertain guys who didn't meet the standards that I wanted to uphold. But clearly I struggled with doing so. Clearly I, you know, I just had these preferences. I didn't have these requirements. I was just like, yeah, I have high standards in my head because I liked the idea of it. But I really struggled with maintaining those standards at this time. This is years ago. And I I also would go out with guys on a second or third date that I knew wasn't my person. Because I knew from the first date. But I was either bored or I had no other options. I just was like, oh, I have nothing to lose. I have nothing else going on. And at this time when I was working with Crystal, I remember there was this one guy who came into my life that I met. And I remember asking Crystal for advice and saying like, this guy is nice. He was super hot. Like he was attractive. He has all these great qualities. I had nothing negative to say about him. He really liked me. But I just knew he wasn't my person. Like even though I had absolutely nothing negative to say about him, I could just feel like it's not him, you know? But I said to her, with all that being said, like should I just go out with him again? Because we have a nice time together. I enjoy his company. You know, I, I there's no reason not to in my mind. So she was like, well, why would you go out with him again? And I said basically what I just said you know, describing him. And I was like, you know, and honestly, I have nothing else going on. And he really likes me. You know, he definitely liked me a lot more than I liked him, which when girls are in that stage of like being single and bored and not really having other options, they love that if a guy likes them more than he, you like him, you know what I mean? So that was like what I said. So I just figured, you know, why not go out with him again? And she was like, well, I could tell you why not. Because then it's counteracting everything in your manifesto. You're doing the manifesto by day, but then by night, you're making the space for the exact opposite. You're calling in what's not for you rather than calling in what's exactly in your manifesto, everything that you want. And you're taking the space away from that, you know? Like if there's a, a an empty space in your life for something, you're filling in that hole with the opposite of what you want, you know? And so it was after that conversation, honestly, truly, honestly, honestly, it was after that conversation that I never, ever, 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 ever gave a guy a second chance again. No matter what. No matter how great of a time we have together, no matter how much he liked me, no matter what, if I could feel that it wasn't my guy, I never gave them a second chance again. That was it. First date, done, out. And, and I had that awakening and I was like, holy shit, I'm manifesting this. Like I'm manifesting the wrong guys. I'm manifesting my singleness. I'm manifesting not calling in like the love of my life, my life's partner. I'm making this happen without even realizing And so, like I said, I had this awakening and so it all trickled down to like a million other things. Like I started being able to look at this from the lens across my whole life basically. I realized all the ways that I was doing that in life. I realized I was allowing space for friends who didn't make me feel good about myself. I realized I was doing some work that I didn't want to be doing. I realized I was living in places that didn't feel like home. And this was when I was living in Miami. So it was right after that where I decided I was going to move back closer to home. I started looking for apartments near my family. I ended up breaking my lease. I just, I I realized like I was running from what I wanted. I was so far from what, what I wanted because I was so not comfortable living in Miami. I wanted to be surrounded by love. I wanted to to feel good and be with true friends and family and Just feel like I was in the right place. And I was staying somewhere where I didn't have any of that. I didn't have my true friends and my family. I didn't feel at home. I didn't feel comfortable. So I'm like, wait, I'm literally calling these feelings into my life. Like, holy shit. That's how powerful I am. That I could completely change 
my entire dynamic in life, I can completely rewire my brain, reframe my mindset, reset my situation. I could put myself in better positions. I can make myself feel better on a daily basis. I can make myself happier and so on and so forth by just making decisions to do so. Like I was deciding to stay friends with people who didn't make me feel good. I was deciding to go out with guys that I knew weren't my person. I was deciding to keep living somewhere that didn't feel like it was meant for me. And so that was it. I I found an apartment. I packed it up. I broke my lease and I moved to New Jersey. And so much started to shift. My friends and my family, like the relationships all flourished. I felt more comfortable in my own skin. My dating experiences improved. I felt so much more confident dating and meeting guys. Like I felt like I could be more unapologetically myself because I felt more true to myself and where I was living. I just felt generally happier. Um, And just a side note, there's two podcast episodes that I want you to listen to as well. The first one I want you to listen to is the moment I knew I was a master manifester because that talks a lot about like the apartment stuff and it also talks about like knowing how powerful that I am, both good and bad. And it'll help you girls realize that for yourself as well. And then the second one I want you girls to listen to is make space to attract everything you want. That one is super relevant to this conversation as well because that's where I was really talking about like removing people that weren't meant for me because they were wasting space in my life and you know I had like that realization and awakening like I said about making space for what I want in my life and I just think both of those episodes are like I said relevant to this topic and I think you girls absolutely need to listen to them and hear them after you finish listening to this one um but yeah I really want you girls to like focus on the manifesting part because you just you need to realize how powerful you are And you need to realize that you're manifesting no matter what. Like think about it like that. I'm going to manifest no matter what. I'm going to manifest either way. I'm going to manifest my results. So it's up to you to decide what results you want. Because you could sit here and say, all right, if I know that I'm in control of my outcome no matter what, then I'm going to say yes to this. Or I'm going to say no to that. Or I'm going to end this friendship. Or I'm going to end this relationship because... Either way, I'm going to make this happen, good or bad. I'm going to create my reality. And that's the truth. You're creating your reality right now, today, as you listen to this episode, as you make the choices that you're going to make today, as you decide what you're going to do for this week, this month, this year. So if you're receiving what you don't want, look inward and really think about this. What choices and decisions are you making? What are you saying yes and what are you saying no to? Do you say yes when you actually mean yes? And do you say no when you actually mean no? Or do you say yes when you mean no and you say no when you mean yes? You know, like, do you say what you mean and do you mean what you say? Do you implement boundaries? How do you spend your time? How do you feel around the people that you spend time with? How do you feel around the people that you welcome in your life? Is it time to reevaluate? those relationships in your life. All of this begs the bigger question, which is what are you manifesting? What are you calling into your life? When you settle, you're always going to receive what you settled for. So if you stay in a toxic relationship, you're making space for toxic relationships and that's why you're not finding a healthy one. It's that simple. So many of us women have spent sleepless nights wondering and crying and praying like why not me why does this one always find a right guy and I can't meet someone like but we ask these questions as if we're victims when we could just reflect deeper we're not reflecting deep enough to actually answer that question because the answer is not just you're undeserving, you're unworthy. It's not just like, why me? Why can't I meet someone? What am I doing wrong? Why don't I deserve this? Why Why am I unworthy? That's not the truth. The truth is it all stems back to what we allow to stay in our lives, what we make space for in our lives. Going back to that question, what are you manifesting? Think about it. 
You could think about it with school, with your career, with literally anything. What are you making happen? If you look at life from the perspective of like, I'm going to experience an outcome here. Like this is this is what I'm presented with, okay? I'm presenting I'm presented with this problem or I'm presented with this situation. So there's going to be an outcome. I'm going to have a result here. Let me just desi- decide what outcome or result I want. If you can approach life like that, you're living so much more consciously, so much more mindfully. You're able to really see yourself in the driver's seat you're not going to be sitting on autopilot mode you're not going to be on cruise control you're not just a passenger a co-pilot sitting in the passenger seat or sitting in the back seat and that's the issue is that a lot of people sit in the back seat of their own lives because they operate subconsciously they do things just because yeah that's just how I am Or that's just how it's always been. Or, oh, that's just what I'm used to. Oh, that's just how the cookie always crumbles. But guess what? It doesn't have to. The cookie doesn't have to always crumble that way. You can have new outcomes. You know that saying that's like, when you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. Or the other saying that's like, nothing changes if nothing changes. And I feel like when I was younger, people used to say that and I didn't really get it. Like nothing changes if nothing changes. Like obviously nothing changes if nothing changes, right? But it wasn't until I got older and really like focused on intentional living and conscious living that it's like, oh, nothing changes if nothing changes. So if I do what I always have done, I'm going to get what I always have got. And that's why I'm not getting new outcomes. That's why I'm not getting new results. That's why I'm not getting ahead. That's why I'm not progressing. That's why I feel like I've plateaued or that's why I feel like I'm even going backwards. But this all starts with how you perceive yourself, how you feel and think about yourself. It all starts with your confidence, your self-esteem. It all can only happen when you can begin every single day with a positive outlook on yourself and feeling like you're worthy and feeling like you're deserving like what what's that other quote you guys know I'm always pulling out my quotes but it was like a Megan Fox quote or tattoo or whatever and it was like we accept the love we think we deserve that used to be a lot of people's like myspace thing but it just kind of came to me these things always come to me when I'm going in on something and that was another thing like at the time like don't really understand what it means because you're young but then as I get older it's like yeah we accept the love we think we deserve because some people ultimately struggle with self-love at all so if you don't even love yourself then you'll accept mediocre love for the rest of your life so if you think no if you shift it to like no I absolutely unapologetically love myself then that's the type of love that you're going to receive and accept unconditional high vibration love. And so if you want to attract that, if you want to attract more, then you need to be more. If you want to attract better, then you need to be better. If you want to attract the highest version of love and meeting your standards and all of that, then you have to be that. You cannot do what you've always done and expect a new outcome. You cannot do the same things, repeat the same cycles and expect change and expect newness. It's like reading the same book and expecting a different ending, right? You can't go chapter one was the same, chapter two was the same, chapter three was the same. Wait, why is chapter four still the same? Because it's all part of the same book. It's the same exact story. So you got to change the story if you want a new ending, you know? And, and, Additionally, what's really important too is that you have to be consistent with this. You have to do this across the board because it goes both ways. Like I see girls who hold their friends to a certain standard and like fight with their friends and get mad at their friends for all of these things but then like let their boyfriend get away with bloody murder. Like they're always mad at their friends for doing the littlest thing but then like they stay in a toxic relationship, you know? And then on the other end, I also see girls who hold men and relationships to really high standards and you know expect certain treatment and loyalty from guys but then 
don't hold friends to that same those same standards and then they stay in like shitty friendships or like they you know just let people walk all over them and treat them some type of way and it doesn't make sense like it's inconsistent I think consistency is one of the most important things that we can be in life and it's one of the most important things that we can prioritize in life because it allows us to have peace it allows us to be at peace because then it's like no drama life feels more like very feminine energy and flowing and things are just working in your favor and working out and they feel right and they feel good and you know what to expect from the people in your life because you hold everyone to the same standard so you're not like oh I have this one treating me like x y and z and then this one oh yeah this is such a great healthy dynamic like it's just no like I feel like I've gotten to a point in my life where Maybe it just has to do with age and maturity. I mean, I'll be 30 years old next year, so it could have something to do with that. But for me, I'm just like, I can't even think about the last time I had an argument with someone. I was disappointed by someone's behavior. Like, I kind of have gotten to a point where I know exactly who's in my life, exactly who is like close you know to me and treats me right and anyone outside of that is not someone that I have expectations from it's not someone that I hold to a certain standard it's not someone that I hold to a certain regard because they don't have that effect on me they're not close to me they're someone that I keep at a distance so you know it's just like I'm more concerned with my day-to-day life and how the people in that day-to-day life make me feel And so it's very important that the people who are in close proximity to you, in close quarters with you, you pay attention to how you feel around those people because this is what you're calling in more and more and more of to your life. What you accept now is what you're going to get later. What you settle for now is what you're going to get later. So it's very important that you're able to reflect on all of this when asking the questions of like, why not me? Why haven't I received those certain things? Because again, it's never about being undeserving or unworthy. It's about being able to take a good look at yourself and a good look at your life and able, being able to reflect and say like, okay, this is why, because I'm settling for this or I'm accepting that. This is why, because I haven't made the proper amount of space to call in what I really want. And you know, going back to my original point of like, manifesting my dream date and the whole like dinner on the beach thing I posted about this on you know social media TikTok Instagram story whatever and I actually had girls commenting or messaging me wherever it was and they were like oh my god where do you find guys like this like this is my dream like oh the guys suck like dating apps suck where where do you find guys like this like I need help which is first of all, hilarious for me of all people to be the one receiving messages like that. Because trust me, it wasn't easy. Um, I was single, 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 single for all of my 20s. So it's like asking someone as if like they constantly have boyfriends, where do you find all these guys? No, I found my one. Okay. But that's actually not even what I was going to say about me finding it. What I was going to say was for me to get asked that question, like, oh, where do you find it? My answer is, in all honesty, is it found me. I was always looking. I mean, they always say like relationships happen when you least expect it or you find that relationship when you stop looking for it. But I will say this, I always expected it and I always looked for it. I never stopped looking for it. I never stopped looking for him. I looked for him in everyone. I looked for him in every guy I met. I had my journals and I would write down and document every guy I met first date or not even a date someone that I maybe just met at the bar that maybe gave me like butterflies a tingly little feeling and I would be like okay here's every single thing that I remember about this interaction every single thing that I noticed about this man here's the way he talked here's the way he dressed here's the way he looked here's the way he made me feel here's the vibe like I wrote it all down a to z pages and pages and I was always saying like I wonder if this is you like is this gonna be you like are you that guy for me and so it's not a surprise to me at all that I found someone who checks all of my boxes because I was looking and I was analyzing 
every single chance that I got, every single guy that I met, I did like a deep dive, you know, inward and wrote about it and sat with my feelings, good, bad, and everything in between to really like observe, like, could this be you? Like, are you him? That's why when I, you know, when this whole dream date thing happened, like, it didn't come as any sort of a surprise because I completely made the space for exactly what I wanted. And I was so conscious and so aware of every single part of every single process with every single guy that I've had any sort of interaction with. And when it came to my boyfriend now, you know, who I'm with, that was what I was doing with him too. And I was like, yes, like, yes, this makes sense. Yes, we align in this way. Yes, we have these same desires. Yes, we're compatible in this way. Yes, we both have similar standards. My boyfriend also has very high standards. Like, it all made perfect sense. So to be like, oh my God, like, that's so crazy. Like, this dream date happened. Like, it's not that crazy. It makes perfect sense. And that's what's going to happen for you. It's going to make perfect sense. It's all going to make sense once it actually unfolds. It might not make sense in the very beginning because you might be confused or you might be like, I don't know, like, I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't want to, you know, get too excited too soon or whatever the case is. That's normal. That happens. But once like, you know, the chips fall where they may, it all makes perfect sense. And you're like, obviously, I got exactly what I wanted. Obviously, I got my dream date. Obviously, I manifested ABC, my entire manifesto, everything that I was scripting about, obviously I got all that because it makes perfect sense. I'm with the person that would give me those things. I'm with the person that I would experience that with. So it just makes perfect sense. But what will also make perfect sense is you not experiencing those things and not receiving what you want if that's the story that you tell yourself. I'm not going to have that. Nothing ever works out for me. Nothing is ever in my favor. Blah, 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 blah. Like if you tell yourself a negative story, a low vibrational story, a low confidence, low self-esteem story, then that's going to be your reality and that's going to make perfect sense too. So think of it as like you get what you give. You're creating your, your reality. You're in control of what you're manifesting. And it's completely up to you to call in exactly what you want. And that is all we have for today. Thank you girls so much for listening. Until next time, girls. 